Roy Hodgson has named his England squad, his provisional England squad. Provisional. Provisional for the 2016 Euros, and there's some shocks. So, without further ado, this is the squad. 26 names, you've got Joe Hart, Fraser Forster, Tom Heaton. In defence, Nathaniel Klein, Carl Walker, Danny Rose, Ryan Bertrand, Chris Smalling, John Stones, Gary Cahill. In midfield, Deli Ali, Ross Barkley, Fabian Delph, <coughs> Danny Drinkwater, Eric Dyer, Jordan Henderson, James Milner, Adam Lalana, Raheem Sterling, Jack Wilshere mm. and Andros Townsend. And mm. up front, the forwards are Wayne Rooney, Harry Kane, Jamie Vardy, Marcus Rashford mm. and Daniel Sturridge. So, Where we've, do you start? we've got those 26 names. What we're going to do is me and Sam from United People's TV, uh, we're going to talk about it. Uh, we're going to talk about the goalkeepers and defence, the midfield and then the attackers and talk about which players have got in and really shouldn't have and which players have missed out and should have gone in. So... Some shocks there, firstly. Initial reaction. What's your initial reaction to that squad? It's a typical England squad, isn't it? There's, it's the sort of situation where three people are going to be pissed off and three people are going to be happy. Yeah. It's the, there's always going to be people who have gripes with it. But there's some serious gripes with this one. It just looks like this gives me absolutely zero confidence going into uh, Euro 2000. I think it's just gold for football fans to talk about because you've got... this. He's kind of... He's been a bit hypocritical in different... Yeah, areas where he's made those decisions. So let's start with the goalkeepers and defence. Um, we've got it down here. You can see by the beautiful handwriting that a few names we just did not expect to be in the squad. That's so very true. Them. Um, so in goal, I mean, look, we won't spend too much time. In There's it. no point talking about them. I think uh, if Jack Butland was there, he would have been first choice. First uh, choice? I would, have, I would have started him at Euro 2016. I think he's had the best season. I think it's so unlucky for him that he's not done that. I'd I'd Joe Hart's been up and down. I, th I, would I would definitely start Forster ahead of Joe Hart as well. And I'm not saying that because I'm a United fan. Forster's had a better season than Hart. Joe Hart's nearly got uh, the Golden Gloves this year, hasn't he? Oh, nearly. So that's fine. <laughs> we, we don't want to <laughs> nearly down, win the Euros, down, do right, we? Right, right. But look, I mean, with, with the situation as it is, Jack Buckland, yeah. obviously not fit. Joe Hart's been the number one for, what, six years, seven years? But Joe Hart will be the guy who starts. Can we agree on that? I would start Forster ahead of Hart. I, I, I just think the forces had a better season, and I said he's I, only played. He's only played the second half no, of that he, season. He, he, he kept like was it ten clean sheets in a These row? These are going to be some back? long videos if we're struggling. <laughs> with the goalkeepers. There's no point arguing with them. It's Joe Hart is going to start whether or not we want him to. Absolutely. Uh, let's go fullbacks because look, when we did our we did our Euro squad selection a couple of months ago, yeah. and there were some areas that were quite easy to sort out. The fullbacks, certainly the uh, on the right hand side were pretty straightforward yeah. and that's the way it's gone. Klein and Carl Walker made complete sense and no uh, surprises yeah, there at no all. No surprises there and c correct as well. Which one starts for you? Uh, that's kind of a tough choice. I think probably Klein because I think he's a little bit less inclined we, to, uh, to run forward and just leave himself way way too open. I think we're going to be playing with uh, quite exposed wingers uh, so I think we're going to need a defender whose first and foremost intention is to defend and I don't think Carl Walker is that. I yeah. think he's excellent going forward. Sure, I think I think Nathaniel Klein's had a fantastic season and I think he probably should start that game. Walker's got that little bit more experience, but mm. uh, Klein for me. Uh, left back, this is where it's quite interesting because there's a man who is missing who's played a lot of games for England. That man is Leighton Baines. And I mean, ev ev everybody expected Roy Hodgson to be extremely pragmatic with his squad, to go with the players that he's used before, but he's gone the complete opposite. Yeah. I mean, if you look in, there's no Baines, no, there's no Carrick, there's no Defoe. Throughout the whole squad, Jaggy Olker as well in defence, we haven't touched on that. But he's kind of gone full hipster, which he's is gone, very, yeah. very un he's Roy gone hipster. Yeah, yeah, true, very true. Uh, uh, Ryan Bertrand has had a, a, a great season, certainly. I mean, Southampton as a squad have had a great second half to the season. Um, and Danny Rose was shooing. Uh, we thought, I think that was a uh, I think Danny Rose is a, is a certain starter there. I agree. I think he's I been agree. excellent. But so, yeah, Leighton Baines, is that the end of his international career? I think you'd probably say so. Yeah. I think with these two coming through, and then obviously Luke Shaw, when he's back from injury, is ahead of both of these two as well, I think, with, with time under his belt. I mean, Possibly, he looked phenomenal yeah. for United at the start of the season. But Baines has had his time. I think this, this year he couldn't really get in on form, could he? Is that, uh, in terms of players missing out, is that the biggest shock? Uh... Or is it the I'd say it's one of the biggest shocks. We can have a separate video measuring the shocks <laughs> in the top five. You know, shock factor. Yeah, shock factor. I'd say that's quite high on the shock factor in terms of the name that's left out. But 
in terms of the players who were going to get ahead of him, he wouldn't have been first choice. We've got a lot of left backs, so yeah, no harm done there. I don't think. And I think I think we're doing a disservice there, not mentioning Aaron Cresswell. <laughs> yeah. Which I mean, throughout this whole squad, I think West Ham are really going to feel hard done by. I think Cresswell's played very well. He's been very consistent, and that's what fullbacks need to be. It's kind of, yeah. I think it's the hardest position in modern football because you've got to bomb it I for th- 90 minutes up and down. I think, and, and ultimately with Cresswell, it's purely down to the fact that he hasn't had the opportunity. Yeah, it's like he hasn't even been in the squad, which no. seems seems unfair. Um, but so that's your left backs, centre backs. Now this this for me is a this is probably the biggest shot for me. It's a head scratcher, isn't it? Um, they've gone with three centre backs. I think you've got Eric Dyer, which we'll get onto in the midfielders as that auxiliary mm. centre back who can go in there. But the players they've gone for uh, Gary Cahill, John Stones, Chris Smalling, Phil Jagielka mm. misses out. I think I think that's a mistake for me. Why is that? Because, uh, yes, he's probably not had the best of seasons, but I, I like his experience there. Uh, Gary Cahill, I've not been too impressed with, to be honest, this season. Um, I think uh, uh, if you put Smalling and, and Jagielka there, I think that's a better two than, than Cahill and Smalling. I that's think uh, out of our centre-back choices there, Smalling is the only one who's had a very good season. John Stone started off quite well. He, when he went off the rails, he's been off the rails since. And to have him at centre back for England at Euros is a big worry for me. Because well, he's the, he, so I think it's going to be Cahill and Smalling are going to be the two that start. Yeah. Stones will be the one that that comes in. If he comes in, can he deal with that kind of pressure after a season that's been really? We, we we don't know. Like he's so far, he hasn't coped with pressure very well. He seems to spontaneously combust. And mm. to have that at centre back at a European competition, risky manoeuvre. But I think it's risky for the fact that we've got three centre backs. One of them is going to get injured. We're England. Come on. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, you've got Eric Dyer. Yeah, I suppose, but if you take Dyer out of midfield, that midfield becomes Dyer. <laughs> he's full uh, of puns, uh, isn't he? full of puns today. Right, uh, for more puns, uh, <laughs> check us out in the next video. We're going to talk about the, the England midfield that is going to be going to the Euros, or at least nearly there. Mm. Um, let us know what you think about the defence, which players have missed out. Do you think Bain should have been in? Do you think Cresswell should have been in? Uh, do you think some of these guys shouldn't have made the squad? Let us know in the comments below. Give the video a like and uh, subscribe to the Bull Street channel.